Yes, thank you. Um, thanks for coming along to this um, this talk or this panel. Um, I think there are some overlaps that I'm going to uh, mention with what uh, Natasha said. Um, so we're on the topic of genocide, what is it and what it isn't. Um, so what is happening in Gaza is not genocide. The charge of genocide against Israel with respect to its military campaign in Gaza is a grotesque misuse of the concept of genocide. As defined in the Genocide Convention of 1948, the crime of genocide, as Natasha said, requires intent. It is quite clear that neither the government of Israel nor the overwhelming majority of Jews anywhere intend to commit genocide. Those who wish to pin a charge of genocide on Israel cite, albeit appalling comments made by a couple of racists in the uh, government of Israel. But these people do not represent the views of the Israeli state and crucially, they are not in the war cabinet. Um, I know Gallant is in the war cabinet and he did uh, refer to um, uh, Hamas as human animals after the attack of October the 7th, but he was clearly referring to Hamas, not Palestinians generally. Um, so these racists have absolutely no influence on Israel's military campaign in Gaza. And again, as Natasha said, it is in fact Hamas that committed genocide on October the 7th. Hamas had the necessary intent, and if we look at the definition of genocide in the convention, they also uh, satisfied the acts required for genocide. They planned and carried out the killing and the infliction of serious bodily and mental harm causing partial destruction and trauma to as many Jews as they could lay their hands on. And that trauma didn't only, um, uh, wasn't only caused to Israelis, but to Jews worldwide. It's had a huge impact on Jews worldwide, what happened on October the 7th. We now know as well uh, that both Hezbollah and Iran were party to Hamas's genocidal plans. So why do we accuse Israel of genocide and not Hamas? The fact is that it's now constantly asserted that Jews are not the victims, but the perpetrators. The charge of genocide did not start with October the 7th or on October the 7th. Anti-Zionists have been repeatedly accusing Israel of genocide for years. The perception of Jews as inherently genocidal derives from a fusion of earlier medieval anti-Semitic tropes which construct Jews as demonic and, and as extremely powerful and full of bloodlust. The genocide charge against Israel forms part of the Holocaust charge, which is that Israel acts towards the Palestinians as the Nazis acted towards the Jews. And in both instances, again, as Natasha said, Israel is accused of the very crime whose commission against the Jews made the necessity for the state of Israel so compelling. Those who assert that Jews are the perpetrators rather than the victims of genocide are effecting an inversion, an inversion of reality and morality. Thus, we have what is known as genocide inversion and Holocaust inversion. Both are equally anti-Semitic and equally distressing for Jews. The benefit for those who engage in Holocaust inversion is that it removes the nagging sense of guilt about what was done to the Jews in the Holocaust, 
while the benefit of the current trend for genocide inversion, for accusing Israel of genocide, is that it removes the nagging sense of guilt about what was done to the Israelis on October the 7th. Now people can say, look what the Jews are doing. They don't deserve our sympathy for what was done to them in the Holocaust, or they don't deserve our sympathy for what was done to them on October the 7th. And more than that, accusing Israel of genocide allows anti-Semites to turn away from reality. Or anti-Zionists, we can, we can use, those, use those phrases interchangeably. Um, from what Hamas, um, so it allows anti-Zionists or anti-Semites to turn away from a reality from what Hamas did on October the 7th, which carried deliberate and unmistakable echoes of the Holocaust particularly with respect to what the Einsatzgruppen did, and to focus instead on Israel's response after October the 7th. Now, this inversion of reality has three elements. The first element is, is one of self-justification. The second element is one of exculpation. And the third element is one of denial. Um, so the denial is a further attack on the victims because it's a deliberate wound inflicted on them, suggesting that they should not be believed. And we can talk about this more uh, during the question and answer session, if, uh, if you wish. Both with Holocaust inversion and genocide inversion, the enormity of the crime that was done to the Jews is appropriated to attack them. Um, and charging Israel with ge genocide, it demonizes and delegitimizes Israel. That's, this is why it's so popular with anti-Zionists. Uh, but it's also an attack on humanity. Um, as Emeritus Professor of Holocaust and Genocide Studies, Professor uh, Philip Spencer, he's at the, or he was at Univer uh, Kingston University, as he said, quote, if the concept and charge of genocide is turned on its head, a crucial part of our post-Holocaust normative framework is not only inverted, but dismantled. Words of the most profound significance no longer have the meaning they had. Worse, they mean the opposite. In other words, if the term genocide is misused, if its meaning is turned upside down, the genocide in, uh, convention cannot be invoked to seek the protection of any other groups who are threatened with destruction. So opposing the charge of genocide not just doesn't just matter to Israel and Jews, re rebutting the charge of genocide against Israel, it matters to humanity, it matters to all of us. All right, thank you. Thank you.